This is going to be your guide for using Ice Cube in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Let's just get this out of the way. It's an abomination. I struggle to call it a Pokemon, and it's one of the worst design things ever, but that's just made more insulting because it can wreck. And that's also put it at this weird meme tier of fascination because it's just horrendous, but it's good. But it's not that great, but it's still good. Let's get into what makes this Pokemon so weird, the Ice Face ability. Pokemon's head functions as a substitute for a physical attack restored in Hail. So think Mimikyu, but physical attacks only, and it can get it back. However, it's not like a perfectly immune to physical attacking Pokemon in Hail. What happens is you only get your head back once per Hail. That's still two immunities to physical attacks, and by that point, you can already take over the game. And another thing weird about this Pokemon is the form change alters the Pokemon's stats. So we have kind of tankiness going on, 75 hit points, 110 defense, 90 special defense, but then when we get hit, that's going to break down into kind of a sweeper, but not really. 80 attack, 65 special attack, that's not heavy sweeping, but we get 130 speed, which is a really good speed tier to be at, and that's where this Pokemon breaks wide open, because... Belly Drum. You have a Pokemon that is immune to a hit that gets to Belly Drum. Think Mimikyu with Belly Drum against physical attackers. Now, there isn't any priority. We can't just, like, Ice Shard after the Belly Drum and then shut everything down. And fortunately, there is vulnerability on this AD attack. There are some Pokemon that can just survive a hit, and then Ice Q can be exploited. Also, when we look at these stats, those are some of the most pitiful defenses any Pokemon's had. 75-70, that is, like, neutral attack get KO'd tier. So it's really weird when talking about this Pokemon because it effectively lives at 75% hit points. You Belly Drum, you Citrus Berry, you're sitting at 75% while being this frail. So if you can outspeed it with a Scarf, if you have some priority, if you have some other ways around it, then you can hit it again and try to KO it. This Pokemon does gain that bonus health inside of Dynamax, which makes it harder to KO, but even then, 75 hit points, 50 special offense, special attackers, get to have a field day with that, and you can even KO this Pokemon with a super effective fire type special attack through Dynamax. So that's where the vulnerabilities come into play. However, if you play Ice Cube properly, it doesn't really matter because you, you end up with a max attack 130 speed Pokemon. So a physical attacker KOs one of your Pokemon, you bring an Ice Cube, they either have to switch to a special attacker and then pray it's faster than Ice Cube or can do something about it, or Ice Cube is just going to belly drum and then start hitting really hard. And the moveset coverage is surprisingly good. Like, you look, Zen Headbutt, Liquidation, Icicle Crash, that that doesn't seem like a rainbow of colors and a rainbow of coverage or anything, but it is. If it was just Liquidation, Icicle Crash, if this Pokemon did not get Zen Headbutt, then it's made completely useless by the Toxapex. But it gets Zen Headbutt, so now you can actually wreck a Toxapex, and I wanted to bring this up. So the Pokemon attack type coverage. This hasn't been updated to Generation 8 yet from Pokemon DB, but gives you an idea of what Pokemon are going to be able to resist it. Not much. Water Psychic, Water Psychic, Water Dark. And without Megas, you know some of these don't even matter anymore. Also, Water Steel. And Empoleon isn't even in the game. So, you don't really have too many tanking options to then respond to this Pokemon. And it's a pure Ice type, so these are going to be your weaknesses. And it's just going to be fire for that special attack, because fighting Rock Steel, primarily going to be physical. I guess like a Steel Beam is a way of blowing up this Pokemon after resisting the hit or just hitting it as it tries to belly drum and that might be one of like the good cases for an off steel beam to wreck an ice cube but even then steel beam is kind of a meh move and then it's weird like this pokemon exists in a strange state of balance because when you talk about it like that it's like it's not going to win every battle and there's just going to be sometimes like it either gets blown up or it has a chance to sweep pretty hard and there's a lot of pokemon that do that but when you just give the free immunity to a physical attack like this it, it's so weird. It's it's like an unbalanced balance that it doesn't always win, but it's allowed to be busted a lot of the time. So therefore, it's okay instead of just being neutrally good. I have no idea what James Turner was on when he designed this Pokemon. I have no I I, I there's no confirmation that I did, but I'm just making fun of him at that point because this should never have gotten past anyone at Game Freak, and then this should have never made it into the balance team. This Pokemon is an experiment gone wrong, but I guess after what's going on with, like, Dracovish and all these weird things, like, the Pokemon are about, if you exploit them, they're useless, and if you can't, they're super powerful. And I would have expected Game Freak to have learned a lesson by this point in Generation 8, but 
here we are. So weird things are going to happen. And then if you Dynamax it after you go for that Belly Drum play, there's really not much the opponent can do. You just get to have boosted damage, boosted craziness. And I was thinking, oh, so you use Max Hailstorm and then you get your head back. That's actually something you don't want to do because then you lose your speed. You lose your sweep. So if you, actually one way of countering this Pokemon is like setting up hail, making it slow again, and then hitting it with a special attack and just making sure you can do like 75% of its health with that special attack. It's weird, but that's just, that's what we're dealing with. So I was thinking, yeah, Hailstorm's cool, but not really. Unless, unless you like know that your opponent only has physical attackers left, either in like 3v3, or I think this Pokemon does a lot better in 6v6. That you just have like a dedicated anti-special team, and then Ice Q cleans it up in the end, and battles just start to become a mess at that point. Like, I guess you can haze it with a Vaporeon, that's one option that you can do, and then it lost that health from the Belly Drum, so it becomes more exploitable if it switches out, so if you force this Pokemon out, it loses those stats. Also, status makes this Pokemon terrible as well. A random Scald Burn, it's over, a Will-O-Wisp, a Paralysis. That's I mean, it's like weird. You can do things about this Pokemon, but I think there's a lot of situations where you then can't do anything about this Pokemon. Uh, the Hailstorm, so yeah, like, you can just use that, set Hail, get the attack back, your opponent hits you, and then you KO them anyways. Like, that might be good in a situation where the Pokemon would be Scarfed, have that outspeed, and then since you have the No Ice, it's bad. Like, I don't know. It's something to keep in mind, but there could also just be that situation where you need to have it against the opponent's, like, last-ditch, sweeping, physical attacker. I don't know, the Dragapult just wants to come in. Even then, like, though, the Dragapult, it actually outspeeds, it uses its double-hitting attack, the first one breaks, and the second one lands, but it's also not going to be enough damage to just, like, straight KO this Pokemon, and then Dragapult eats a hit and dies. Just keep a lot of weird things on table, because I'm thinking about, like, okay, so your Dynamax, your last turn Dynamax, use Hailstorm, and then you get your Ice Head back, for the next turn, you eat the hit, or something, because that Hailstorm at plus six should just be KOing the, the opponent anyways. I don't know. Like, everything just kind of dies, just play smart. And then there's other coverage, Iron Head, Head Smash. Don't run this. You're going to need that Zen Headbutt, because you don't want to lose just because the opponent brought Tox Pecs, and you have an Iron Head for no reason. So, that's that's like it. That's like the only way of running Ice Cube. So I was looking through its moveset, gets Junk here, the special attack is useless. The only thing that makes this Pokemon good is the Belly Drum. Like, Game Freak could have pushed this Pokemon a lot of other directions, given it, like, a bit more compelling moveset or better stats or something. But they were like, no. You have to breed Belly Drum into this Pokemon. That's the only thing that makes it viable. And then, good luck, have fun. Now, there's also been talk about Substitute on the Ice Skew, and I don't think you should run it, because you can't afford to give up that Zen Headbutt. That means Vaporeon, that means Toxpex, that means Bulky Water just completely ruins your day. But the idea behind it is that you use Substitute. So, you lose your Ice Face, you have Substitute up, and then you have the 130 speed, and now they have to break through your Substitute. That puts you at 25% health. After you Belly Drum, that gives you Salak Berry. So, now it's kind of like... The same idea, so you're effectively giving up the Zen Headbutt to have a chance to not be status depending on the stall situation. Because, like, Substitute can wreck people like that, and then you're also trying to go plus one on your 130 speed, therefore you don't get, like, randomly scarfed or randomly outsped like that. But now you're also more vulnerable to priority at just 25% hit points, and your Dynamax is going to give you less health as well. I'm not feeling it. Also, a big thing to note about the Ice Skew is that if you don't crash into it, you know, if you just let it set up a Belly Drum as this Ice Face, it's going to not really do much because now it's kept at that 50 speed. So the second you see one of these things hit the field, you switch out into a special attacker. Even if they Belly Drum, even if they get, like, their Citrus Berry, a pretty mediocre special attack is going to be able to KO it, and you just need a Pokemon that's faster than 50 speed to accomplish that. So worst case scenario is it's a frail 130 speed Pokemon. Average case scenario, depending on the switch and exploiting it, it can't do anything. Like, it's not like you risk something. It's not like, oh, I'm switching into my Pokemon and then Ice Skew is going to not Belly Drum and still be threatening. No, it has to Belly Drum to pretty much have all of its worth. And then the same things will happen. Like, if it puts up a substitute, while on the turn you switch, you break the sub, it belly drums, and now it's just going to be at low health, and then you KO it. Because it's still going to be slow. The Ice Q interactions, man. This Pokemon doesn't make sense, but you can just tell the power right here. So, what about the damage calculations? That kind of shows us where the scariness comes into play for this thing. So, what we have is Ice Q, zero attack. I also wanted to experiment with that. Like, is it better to run tanky 
Or is it just better to go full offensive? You know, you go high attack, high speed, jolly nature. What's the one that you want to run? Well, here, if you just have no investment into the attack, you have hit points, try to survive and like pull out some cheekiness against the opponent. Plus six, zero invested. Maybe that four splash of EVs. We are one-shotting a Sil Valley. So that is the neutral KO that we have with the Icicle Crash. Pretty decent, but that means we can get walled out. So if we bump that up to the 252, then we can see that is significantly more damage, and it's going to be harder for Pokemon to survive. That also means, like, if this Pokemon has lost its Ice Head, even if you have a physical attacker, then you need to Dynamax. Like, you need to give up a Pokemon to get rid of the head, or usually, like, it trades when it comes to the Belly Drum setup. Again, weird things are just going to, weird interactions are going to happen. And then you need Dynamax, and then you need to try to KO it. But then that means Ice Q has the opportunity to Dynamax, and it's still going to be sitting on a lot of its health. And then you kind of have to Dynamax to get, like, the most damage out of the Pokemon, because if we're dealing with just Liquidation, there's no stab. So even full attack investment, we're not going to neutrally KO some just naturally bulky Pokemon like the Silvalli, and that leaves us open to attack. So by using our stab to get the most possible damage and setting hail, then that also gives the, uh, that brings us our head back, that's going to slow us down, that's going to have a lot of weird interactions. Liquidation, that's going to be KO potential, because Icicle Crash and Liquidation are boosted to 130 when used as max moves. This Pokemon just makes no sense. Like, I, I haven't gone up against it. So it's like, I haven't seen it, which means it's probably not that fantastic, but you're hearing a lot of scary stories about it. And on paper, sometimes scary stories, but on other times, it's like, yeah, it seems like it's not that great. So, I mean, you just have to, like, experience this thing until you, st until you start beating it, I feel. Um, if he uses Icicle Crash and you have just, like, that average bulk, or not average, but, you know, this decently dense bulky Pokemon trying to go into a Dynamax, there's a chance you can get KO'd on that Icicle Crash. So, like, you trade Dynamax and then you get your head back and then you're slow, but you're still Dynamax, you have a lot of health. That needs to break and then you just need to beat down the Pokemon. It's weird. By Dynamaxing, you create a lot of vulnerability, but you also become a lot more unstoppable, and you can kind of stop Pokemon that would stop you. Here's the Vaporeon, full hit points, full defense, the Zen Headbutt, that's going to be doing, you know, 60% at worst, and then you just haze. So you eat the hit, you haze, and then the opponent can't do anything. And it depends on the move that you're coming in on, because Icicle Crash, Zen Headbutt, that's too much. But if you can, like, predict a Liquidation, then you switch in Vaporeon, you eat the Liquidation, that's going to be pretty good. But then if you go for the Max Mindstorm, Zen Headbutt, Max Mindstorm is going to get that bonus damage, so that becomes 130. Doesn't KO us, though. But that's going to make it rough, because then we use Haze, we took that big hit, they're still going to be able to get their head back, maybe, because at that point, it's like, they either have to switch out, but their Dynamax, they probably don't want to. And then that Icicle Crash at plus zero, but at 130, bringing Hail, that's going to, like, convert it into the KO. But, I mean, then that Pokemon's kind of stopped, because now it has to Belly Drum again, now it has to do all of these other things. I don't know. It's weird. And then I want to bring in the Jolteon. Just got to show you guys, like, here's another weird thing. Jolteon just speed ties with this guy, and the Thunderbolt KOs it. What? What? Wait, what? Huh? How How does this exist in Pokemon? How, how does this exist in Pokemon where Pokemon is so specially frail that Jolteon just, like, has to throw the dice, you win that speed tie, and then you just kill it? it makes Jolteon more viable, and Evolution Team's more viable, therefore I guess it's balanced. My goodness, I've called things Glass Cannon in the past, but this is on a whole nother level, and then I just want to bring in, like, Rotom Heat. The Rotom Heat Thunderbolt's enough to KO. Belly Drum into that, and then Choice Scarf, Timid, Thunderbolt finishes it off. So, this Pokemon doesn't have anything on Special Attackers, doesn't have anything on Faster Pokemon. If it gives up its Ice Head to set Belly Drum and then gets Scarfed, or like Focus Sash into a Speed Boost, and then that's another thing, just Focus Sash. Focus Sash Special Attacker, that works. Focus Sash Physical Attacker, that can do 75%, that works. There's just too much jank for me, guys. I, I, don't, I don't even know. Um, what happens if we take the Life Orb off the Jolteon, and it's actually like a Focus Sash Jolteon. Still enough to KO. So if Ice Q ends up getting popular, switch the Life Orb off your Jolteon, turn it into a Focus Sash. That way, if you lose a Speed Tie, you can still kill it. If you have, like, some weird things happen with Dynamax matchups, then you still have the opportunity to KO it as well. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's Ice Q. It's... It's good until it isn't, and it's terrible until it kills you. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.